This is the Vaxi XC Wireless. You may or may not have already seen my review of the Vaxi XC Wired variant, but if you haven't, I said it was in my top three wired mice. And with this new wireless model, I think I would still have to agree. When it comes to the shape, I'd rather use this over most of the competition right now. It's not my absolute favorite, but it's really good. Now again, that's just my personal opinion coming from someone with large hands that primarily uses a relaxed claw grip, and everyone's gonna have their own preferences when it comes to shape. The mouse that most people are gonna want a comparison to is the Logitech Superlight. I don't have the Logitech Superlight with me at the moment, but I do have the Pure Trek Valor, which is identical in shape and size. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison. While they do look fairly similar, they both feel quite different from each other in hand. The Vaxi XE is shorter in both height and length, and it has a steeper drop-off on the slope, so it has a sharp peak that sort of pokes your hand, and it also has a wider back that scoops under the palm a little bit more. The G Pro wireless shape fills out the hand more, whereas the Vaxi XE wireless is a little bit more of a chiseled shape. Now, if you're just here because you want to know the difference between the wired variant and the new wireless one, they're essentially the exact same apart from the wireless one having the newer sensor, the PixArt 3395, and it now weighs an additional 8 grams thanks to the battery. The original weighed 68 grams on my scale, whereas the wireless one now weighs 76 grams. So thankfully it's still under 80 grams, but I know a lot of people are going to be disappointed it wasn't lighter, which I fully understand. Faxi have said they are open to making lighter variants in the future, but for now they don't want to sacrifice on build quality. Speaking of which, I was pretty impressed by. It isn't perfect, but it was very, very solid. There is a weak spot in the very center narrowest part of the mouse that makes a tiny amount of creaking when you squeeze it hard enough, but as far as the rest of the mouse, on my copy, the build quality is top notch. There is a little bit of side play on the main buttons, which is my biggest pet peeve when it comes to mice, although thankfully the buttons are nicely tensioned, so it's not too bad, but this is something I would like to see improved. As far as the side buttons though, they're very well tensioned and have no rattle or wobble. They also have very minimal pre and post travel, so they feel nice and crisp. The switches on the main clicks are 70 gram Huana switches, and with the the way that the shelves implemented, they feel very light, but still more tactile than something like the Logitech G Pro Wireless. The scroll wheel is also very tactile and has well-defined steps. It is a little stiff compared to other scroll wheels, but that happens to be very nice if you play games like CSGO and you have your jump bound to your scroll wheel, as many people who b-hop do. Oftentimes on some mice, the scroll wheel can accidentally go off, <coughs> final mouse, and that can get you in a lot of trouble in some in-game situations. Taking a look at the bottom of the mouse, you can see Vaxi decided to keep their massive old school Zowie style skate design. The skate set comes with their version grade PTV, so they're very smooth and fast, although they are a bit scratchy when making diagonal movements on the cloth pad. I'm not sure where they sourced their PTFE from, but it's a pretty fast glide experience. This mouse is driverless, so everything's done through these buttons on the bottom of the mouse, including turning on and off motion sync and high speed mode. With high speed mode enabled, you're getting a more reliable wireless experience, but at the cost of battery life. With the high speed mode enabled, you're going to get about 45 hours of battery, whereas on the standard mode, it's closer to 90 hours. You can also check the battery life at any time by using this button here, but this is also bound to the page down key press, so you can use it as an extra easy to reach bind in games. Hey guys, so while I was making this video, Vaxi released an optional firmware update that introduces a new mode that replaces the standard mode, which they're calling competitive mode. On this new competitive mode, it's giving you an even more reliable experience over the high speed mode, and it gives you 50 hours instead of 45 hours. But it also disables a few things like motion sync and the ability to change your lift off distance, as well as using this extra button that I just talked about. Charging the mouse doesn't take very long at all. With just about two hours of charging, you can have enough battery to last one to two weeks depending on which settings you're using. As far as the in-game difference between the modes, using one or the other isn't gonna feel a whole lot different, but if you want the best stability, then I would go ahead and use the competitive mode because it is more reliable. But of course, that's a decision that you're gonna have to make yourself. It is nice to see a company close the gap on Logitech and Razer's wireless performance though. Also, a neat feature Vaxi added to this mouse is the ability to switch between two devices. So you can have this plugged into multiple computers and access the other one within two seconds. Although you will need to purchase a second receiver from Vaxi if you want to use this feature. If you still don't know whether or not you think this mouse is going to be right for you, here's my original review of the Wired XE, as almost everything I said in that video is still applicable to the Vaxi XE Wireless. 